company again? Yeah, it's Analog Bytes. Okay. So, uh, first module, it takes, it's called the Atari Pokey. That's the name of the actual computer chip. Some people here might be familiar with it. Uh, usually when people hear Atari, they think of the 2600, which had a slightly different chip. The Pokey is essentially that on steroids. It has a lot better pitch resolution, and it has some extra things that it can do as far as processing the types of noise that it makes. So the way that I've configured it, it's set up to be three channels that all get mixed into the single output that's on the chip itself. So I have it set up to be two oscillators and an external input. The two oscillators are basically the same, and oh, let's go ahead. So that's both one playing together at the moment. So it has the basic Atari square wave sound that everyone's familiar with. And one of the interesting things is because this is an old computer sound chip, the pitch resolution isn't the best, which also tends to make it more interesting. So it, the Pokey has 8 and 16-bit pitch modes, which is the difference between having 256 discrete pitches that it can generate and 65,536 pitches that it can generate. So if you listen to just the standard bit pitch mode just doing a sweep and you can hear how it, it gets smoother as it goes down just because that's where its own internal clock dividers have better frequency resolution and then in 16 bit mode it's basically just smooth all around so there are two channels like that they're they have the same configurations as far as uh, coarse pitch, fine pitch, cold proactive input. The other thing is uh, that each one has its own, uh, essentially a voltage control amplifier, which is what the keys are controlling right now. What's both controllable by a potentiometer and voltage controllable is a wave shape. So the way that the, the sound actually comes out of the chip, it's always a one-bit pattern. And the most basic one-bit pattern you can have is a square wave. It's just on or it's off, repeating just periodically. But it, it can do these sequences to generate the pitch noise that everyone tends to be more familiar with as far as Atari sounds go. Since it's pitched, you can do the, the sweeping sounds and really get, get a feel for it. And it's got, uh, the way that I have it set up, there are six different waveforms, including the square, so that leaves five different types of this pitch noise. With, they each have their own sort of amount of grading and all that. that ends up being kind of yeah, another interesting side effect, the way that it makes the noise, there's a, essentially a very high frequency linear feedback shift register, and it gets sampled by a lower clock, and what can happen is at certain pitches, you can hear it, it's kind of dropping out every once in a while, and that happens when the clocks get synchronized, and it ends up just grabbing a stream of all ones or all zeros. So that, that only happens on some of the waveforms and not others because they generate the, the patterns in different ways. So there are two channels of that. And uh, another thing, the pitch range. Uh, in addition to the 16-bit pitch and the 8-bit pitch control, there are some other registers inside the pokey that can be flipped to drop into very, very low frequencies. So I, I took the 16-bit pitch mode and I basically just extended it down another four octaves, down to about 0.5 hertz. So you can get these, it essentially just becomes a series of clicks at that point.
which for a square wave you just get the very periodic sound. But for the noise waveforms it becomes just these random blip sequences. Must be great triggers. filter is sort of a one-bit edge detector and it has its own it's essentially you can take of the the two oscillator channels one can act as a high-pass filter for the other but it's since it's only a one-bit high-pass filter it doesn't behave quite how high-pass filters usually do it's it's easier if you hear it so this is just the normal, normal sound and then if I high-pass filter that with channel 2 So it has this effect of high pass filtering, but it's also interacting with the signal too, so it, it gets this modulation artifact going. Is that voltage controllable, that the high pass filter part? Yeah, it just it uses the second channel's pitch. Okay, that's what acts. Oh, so if you modulate like the second channel's pitch, then you can control that. Feed. Oh, that's yeah. cool. Okay. And also, like while you're doing that, channel two still you can you can just mute it if you want, or you can leave it on and then actually hear the pitch of channel two in addition to that high pass. Okay. above hearing as far as the frequency range. Another thing that I kind of like is if, if you have a square wave on both of the channels and then you put the high pass filter in, if they're close in frequency, it gets this almost like an octave effect. So this is before, this is after. Before, after. So those are the two oscillator channels. And then there's a third channel, which is an auxiliary <coughs> input. And so at the moment, I just have a low pass gate self oscillating into it. And it's pretty straightforward. It's, it just it samples with the 12-bit A to D the incoming audio, and then plays it back straight out of the Atari chip, just right through its D to A converter. And the sample rate for this is voltage controllable, in addition to having a gain control on the front panel. And it can, at the moment, it can do up to four times gain. So this is with the sample rate all the way up. And then the usual sort of reduction artifacts, no sample rate reduction. And you can overdrive that, and a little light comes on to let you know. <laughs> oh yeah, that's another thing. I mentioned there's 8-bit pitch and 16-bit pitch. So you can actually, obviously one of those is a lot more range than the other does. So if you're in either pitch mode and you happen to go beyond the range of what the Atari chip can do in terms of frequency, it has little lights to let you know, which, I don't know if anyone can actually see these blinking, but so right now I have it set to make frequencies that are too high for the chip. They blink and then if you go the opposite way too low, they're just on solid. So it's a quick visual feedback to let you know if it sounds like it's suddenly out of tune, you can just check, you know, oh, I'm going outside of the range of the chip. Which chip was it? It's the, the Atari Pokey. Did it have a, a number? 
C012294. And I think of that I'm using like the B-01. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's what I've been working on. So cool. Excellent. Yeah. Is it on? Are you selling it now? I'm trying to get it to go on sale next month. So this is the prototype. It's the full feature set and everything. Just doing some code tweaks. Just basic hardware enhancements to try and get the price down, the manufacturing, that kind of stuff. Well, yeah, thanks. Yeah. Any other questions?